Welcome. Great to see everybody here. Hopefully you're here for getting started with scripting in Python with me, Mike Shaw. So nice to meet you folks. Yeah, thank you for the applause. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, of course, you've got to make me earn it. So you know, uh, we'll we'll see at the end. But <laughs> so, anyways, we're going to be doing a little bit of a uh, tutorial here, in some sense, of just getting you started with scripting in Python. This is for an introductory audience for whatever introductory means to you. So maybe you've done a bunch of programming in other languages and just want to hop into Blender. Uh, maybe some of you are expert artists, uh, but have learned a little bit of programming and want to learn just how to get started. So that's kind of the goal, and that's the origin uh, of this talk here. Um, just by a raise of hands, how many folks have programmed in uh, Python before? Have a little bit of experience. OK, so good number of the audience. Um, and I suppose of those folks who have rose their hands, how many have done uh, Python programming in Blender? Um, OK, so a good number of folks. OK, so yeah, keep me honest. You know, shout out something if there's something interesting, and I'll repeat it. Um, but you know, we'll just go ahead and get started with uh, the beginnings here. So uh, anyways, here's the abstract that hopefully brought you to this talk and got you enticed um, to learn a little bit of uh, scripting or just to see how things are, are done or how maybe I approach them. Um, and this should be a fun talk. Again, it's for everybody, again, whether you've programmed like the folks who rose their hands, or if you haven't, that's great. You're in the right place. Uh, so either way, uh, everybody here is welcome. Um, and I found when I started messing around with scripting in uh, Blender, I just keep messing around uh, even more, more time in Blender, which is great. Um, so again, just to give you a little sense of what we're going to be creating, uh, again, you know, evaluate your <laughs> skill level. I'm just going to go ahead and show you whether you're watching this uh, now live with me or in the future, what we're going to be building here. Um, so we're going to be basically building just a little Python script, uh, and then we'll implement it as a command for creating a bounding box. So again, if you'll see uh, Suzanne here, our mesh, and then the bounding box that surrounds it, uh, that's what we're going to be creating. Now, of course, there are bounding boxes and ways to do this in uh, Blender already, but we're going to see how to do this programmatically and just explore uh, some of the different APIs uh, that we can use, or rather the Python API and some of the modules within it. All right, so if that keeps you here, that's great. Uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, keep moving along here. Uh, so the code for the talk is available. You can, of course, just Google my name. The slides are already on the website if you want to peek and poke around a little bit. Um, and then you can uh, go from there. And a little bit about me. Uh, primarily, I uh, teach at Northeastern University. Uh, I'm housed in the computer science department. And I do a lot of sort of computer graphics programming, so OpenGL, Vulkan, that kinds of stuff. Uh, but every once in a while, I dabble into the art uh, and into Blender. I make all of my students learn a little bit of Blender, even if they are on more of the computer science and programming side, because um, everybody needs to know how to talk to everybody, right? Um, so that's a little bit uh, just about me and uh, what I uh, do professionally. Uh, and a lot of my consulting work has been writing plugins and extensions with 3D tools to get them working with Blender or some sort of uh, data pipeline. Alrighty, so you know, thinking about programming uh, Blender 3D here, uh, again, the origin of this talk uh, is born out of a computational geometry class. So something that tends to be more uh, proves and algorithms and proving things. And, and I try to make it as applied as possible. So having students implement things in C++ and SDL and doing graphics and, and sort of interesting uh, algorithms to do in 2D, computing convex holes and, you know, typical geometry uh, things that you might think of. Uh, but when it comes to the 3D part, I can't assume that folks have uh, OpenGL or Vulkan or Metal Knowledge um, in this course. Um, but what I also think that opens a door is, even if you are somebody who does a lot of 3D programming, is Blender is a great pro uh, program for using as a playground to play around with different ideas. So again, uh, wherever you are in your sort of journey here, whether you're an expert 3D programmer, consider Blender as a tool you can play around with uh, as well. It's a quick sort of sandbox that I like to use. Uh, and again, if you're beginning, this is a great place to learn some fundamental 3D concepts as well. So you know, from the origins of this class, my idea was, hmm, what kind of interesting problems can a student work on? And again, another way to think about this for yourself, if you're just learning how to program in uh, Blender, is to take some things that 
you know or might know how to use in Blender itself, and well, you have a solution. Someone else already has implemented things for computing and displaying normals or bisecting a mesh or computing convex holes or bonding boxes, uh, which we're gonna create here. So it's kind of nice. You have a solution in some ways of something that you can look at, the code or at least a reference of a visual of something actually working. So you know, thinking about some of these ideas, I thought something that was approachable was uh, bounding boxes, at least for a first programming project here. And it turns out that this problem itself was interesting enough and exposes you to enough interesting pieces of uh, Blender 3D that, again, I, I think it's a nice uh, exercise for folks just getting started here. OK, so in terms of getting started with Python scripting in Blender 3D, uh, what do we need here? Well, of course, we need to install Blender. Uh, here at the Blender conference, I'm assuming everybody's got that <laughs> set up here. So you know, don't have to sell you too much on that. Um, but you know, keeping your Blender up to date is a good idea as the API and programming interfaces might evolve. Keeping your Python up to date, so version 3.10 uh, or beyond, you know, is pretty modern these days. And again, just to note that uh, Blender does tend to keep up with the releases of Python as far as how it's uh, progressing. Uh, but that's about it. Once you install Blender, you're pretty much good to go, whether that's for Windows, your favorite flavor of Linux, and, and Mac as well. So let's go ahead and get to the scripting layout here, because that's the part that we're going to be working in. Um, and I'll go ahead and I have Blender uh, open up here. And I've made it as large as I can. Um, but I'll have plenty of images in case you can't see or you can capture on the recording. Uh, and the first thing that I need to do is get to get to the uh, scripting interface. Now, of course, looking here, I can't find it. So I've got a scroll here. So if you didn't know, this guy scrolls. <laughs> you can find scripting way at the end here. Uh, and go ahead and tap onto that. Of course, if you can't see it, sometimes when I'm working on an airplane or something, you can go to your preferences and adjust your uh, resolution and grab it that way as well. Or page down also works. So just a few little tricks. If you're like me, writing a talk on an airplane, uh, <laughs> how to do some of these things. Um, so anyways, that brings us to this scripting interface, which again, if you've just worked in this tool as an artist, you might not have known about, or maybe have hidden away from it. That's uh, how I approached it when I first started. Uh, and we've got a few windows here. Of course, we've got our regular uh, viewport here, which we can uh, move around here. That's this window here. We've got this Python interactive console, which I'll get to us writing our first uh, little program uh, in a moment here. We've got an info log uh, below the Python console here that's going to kind of tell us what's going on in Blender. And on the right, we're going to use this for writing uh, more interesting or longer scripts here. So I see we've got you know, a bunch of um, more space here for writing our scripts. Now, of course, you can also use other external editors, VS Code, Vim, you know, choose your favorite tool, whatever it might be, PyCharm, uh, and you can write your scripts uh, in those and, and load those in as well. But I'm going to be working just in the text editor. Again, that's all you need to get started. You have it here. Okay, so the brief recap here. Here's our scripting workspace. We've got uh, script. Uh, or Python scripts that we can write in here. And again, you can see what version of Python you're using, hopefully something 3. maybe 10 or later, but definitely greater than 3. Uh, your info log, which we're going to follow along and see what's going on in Python. And then the text editor on the right, where you can write many, many lines of code as you need. All righty. Uh, and here were just my hints on finding the <laughs> workspace if you need to find that as well, uh, which I showed you. All right, so let's go ahead and write our first but not last Python Blender script. And again, this is going to be, I think everybody in this room has done something like this. But just to make sure that things are working, at the least, if you install a fresh copy of, well, I hear Blender 4 is coming out soon, so you know, might want to test that out. Uh, just go ahead and type print and hello, uh, Blender conference folks, and give that an enter, and there you go. So, you know, your first uh, script, everything's working, and it's echoing back the text here. Okay, so printing out our text. Again, by the amount of hands I saw rose here, a uh, piece of cake for, for everybody. But for those uh, otherwise, this is a great way to make sure things are up and running. All right, so, you know, congratulations on that, if things are, are working, and I'll let the animations play as well um, in, in case you're uh, not able to 
or want to follow along one piece at a time. Uh, but that's our first script here. Now, interestingly, with the Python uh, setup within the, the scripting workspace, you'll notice that there's a bunch of built-in modules here. And we'll have to revisit some of these later, but this is basically telling us in our Python setup that we've imported a bunch of things here. BPY, Blender Python, BPY.data, BPY.ops, and so on. So these are some of the important modules that we're going to probably want to take a look at later on here. Uh, those are already set up for us uh, in the Python console here. But again, if you're writing your own scripts, you're going to have to import these on your own. OK, so that's our first script. Uh, very exciting, and things are, are working and good to go. And again, just as a little aside, you know, hopefully you have a little bit of Python experience. But again, you don't need too, too much here. Uh, if you're pretty comfortable with a list and a dictionary and a tuple and a loop, maybe some if statements, that's pretty much it. So you can get started with Python relatively easy. Um, again, Python's a great language for just getting things up and running. And today, uh, just again as a caveat, though I'd appreciate uh, audience participation, if you see something, I'm going to keep the code as simple as possible. Right? We don't have to do anything complex. We can tighten things up as needed. Um, but this is really your cheat sheet as far as data structures go, um, which again, you can learn in uh, a day or, or, or mess around with in a day's time. So pretty cool here. We have Python embedded in Blender 3D, which means it's basically you know, the power of a full programming language at our fingertips here, uh, which is awesome. Uh, so we can use all the different modules that we would otherwise have in Python. Uh, so things like the uh, system module or creating random numbers. So again, just to follow along with a little example here, I'm going to revisit uh, over here on the screen. And I can import something like uh, random, which gives us access to random numbers here. And we can print off maybe a random number here. So print random. Uh, let's do rand int here, 0 to 5, something like that. And I'll hit enter, and we get some random integers here. OK, simple enough here. Now, again, the, the observation here, again, is that we're able to access all of Python. Uh, but I did things pretty quickly here, which might have been a little slick. So just some shortcuts to help you save some time. Again, as you're typing stuff out, you can tab to autocomplete. So if I just type rand and tab, it'll give me a good list of things and that, that I can uh, use here. So again, here's some random uh, things I can use, and then I can just autocomplete it. And it's also giving me help there. So I'm hitting tab as I'm doing that. Uh, and then in order to not repeat myself, you can cycle up with the uh, up arrow key uh, to go back in your history uh, and down uh, vice versa. Again, just some time-saving tips there for you. Uh, if this is brand new for you. All righty. Uh, and here's a still capture of the code, in case the animation was too distracting. <laughs> um, and here are those productivity tips, again, just for your review. OK, so again, you know, let's write another script here, maybe something interesting to do. Uh, and this will be something that's interesting in the sense of when you're actually writing your scripts, maybe you just want to know how long something takes. The stuff we're going to be doing today is relatively quick as far as the computation, but some of you and some of the great talks that I've been listening to are on you know, render farms and building you know, really complex stuff that might take a long time to uh, render and draw. Uh, so you might want to use something like uh, time here. So let's just import time. And what time does is it gives us the current time here is this integer. But what we really care about is uh, when time starts so I'll assign a variable start time to whatever time it happens to be. And the elapsed time here is going to be my, uh, well, current time minus my start time. Hit Enter, and let's print out that variable. And again, I'm going to tab to just auto-complete this. Um, and there we go. So 10 seconds, that's my typing speed there. Not, not too shabby, I guess. <laughs> Um, but um, you know, that's, that's the general idea. So something, again, uh, useful and everything that you have available in Python for you. So if you need to plot some graphs or do something else interesting, you've got it. All righty. So you know, that, again, is pretty interesting. And you can leverage all of your Python skills here. But you've also got the power of uh, Blender, again, at your fingertips here. So that means, again, the Python API that's attached to Blender is, again, these Python commands that we can use. Uh, we're going to learn that these are uh, different operations that we can capture here. 
Uh, but let's go ahead and just observe uh, what's going on here behind the scenes. And this is a great way also to, to learn a little bit about what Blender is doing. So what I'm going to do is just draw your attention here to my viewport window with the cube. Let's select this cube here and go into edit mode. Three for faces. I'm going to hit enter here. Uh, and let me pan my camera just a little bit here and zoom us in. And E for extrude. I'm just going to move this cube up a little bit here and hit enter here. Now, as soon as I did that, uh, if you caught it here in the console log, which I'll highlight in the uh, what's over my shoulder here, the bottom uh, left of the screen, you'll see that this is the command for doing an extrude. Uh, wow, okay, that's a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> but let's copy it here, okay? And let's go ahead and paste it in here. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit enter here in one second and keep an eye on my viewport. I'll hit enter uh, there and we extrude it. Hit up in our history, enter again, and we're repeating here. Okay, so we can see our uh, extrude command is being executed over and over and over again. Okay, so this is one way to kind of learn about what's going on in the Blender pa uh, API here. And again, maybe, you know, asking you to memorize this function, that's not what I'm asking you to do. <laughs> but what I am asking you to do is maybe just take a look here and say, okay, this is something in the Blender Python, something with ops, mesh. Okay, and there is some extrude uh, region move. That looks like some function with a bunch of uh, default arguments. Okay, so that's kind of pointing you in the right direction of where you can learn about stuff. Now, again, just for learning about stuff, you can just do things uh, in your actual uh, viewport here and see the result. So another little tip here uh, for learning about what's going on in Blender, let's go to Edit, Preferences, and turn on the Python tooltips. And then if you just kind of hover around some stuff here, let's kind of hover around uh, this here, Object, and you'll immediately see not just the tooltip, but below it, the Python uh, API of what's going on. So you'll see Object Properties. Okay, there's something in BPY, .data, .screens, scripting, etc. Again, pointing us in the right direction here. Uh, let's actually click into this and see um, something like our viewport display. I'm gonna highlight over bounds here because we might need that later. But again, object.showBounds, that's again sort of the, the category of, of things. And then bpy.data.objects.cube in quotations dot show bounds. Okay, so that's what we're actually doing when we uh, click here. Uh, we can see that this command is being processed. Now let me actually click on this uh, cube here. Let's go in edit mode and toggle the bounds. And again, you'll see that uh, over my shoulder here, you know, something is toggling true to false, true to false. Okay, so another uh, great way to learn here. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I love uh, that as an exercise or when I saw that, um, and this is similar in some other 3D tools uh, that shall not be named here. <laughs> but this again is a great way to uh, learn uh, and, and explore a tool here and, and start programming things. So again, as an exercise, you can try that uh, out here. If you're following along, uh, it's a great time to, to pause and try that. But uh, we're going to keep moving along here uh, so we can get to our bounding box. Uh, and a few other things that are useful, right? There's built-in help in Blender. Uh, so if I stumble, I'm trying to get through this without making any errors. We'll see if that challenge is uh, accomplished. But you can just type in help and then some sort of command or module here. So again, that BPY uh, module is pretty interesting. So again, if I do help, type in BPY, well, I get the help page here. And we can kind of see what this is about here. Give access to Blender data and utility functions. Okay, sounds like something that we want here. Uh, so that's just one thing that we can do. The other thing that's gonna be useful is if you wanna see the type of something. So again, maybe you're playing around with a Blender user interface and trying to capture what sort of actions were happening. Maybe you can just do something like type here and see the type of something. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, jump ahead for a moment and uh, try that uh, command out here. Let's scroll to the bottom. Use BPY, context, and let's see here. Uh, active, again, kind of auto-completing. Again, maybe we don't know what all these things are, but object, okay, I'm just gonna hit enter here. And it's telling me, hmm, the active selected object is uh, this cube here, okay? Uh, now if I hit up in my history here, assign this to a variable, my object, and then I can see what's the type of my object. Okay, okay, it's a something bpy types dot object here. 
I can kind of explore around here a little bit. Uh, now that I've got things in a variable, I hit dot, see what's available. Uh, data is one that I know about. Okay, that's something there. And that is printing out the type here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and look at it here. Okay, so it looks like our objects, uh, data is some sort of mesh. Makes sense, some sort of geometry. So again, that's just exploring and playing around with uh, our data here. All right, and then of course the uh, documentation is useful. Again, another pro tip, maybe you're familiar with this in scripting, but the pro tip is to download the offline version. It's a little bit faster. You don't have to wait for web requests. So if you are a power user, that can be uh, useful. Okay, and then we did also enable our tool tips. Yes, question. Sure, yeah, because you can just use like um, F1 or whatever the built-in search is. Um, I'm a two-screen user, so I always have the offline uh, just up and running, and then I just type in the search uh, built-in. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and if anyone knows how to do uh, look through the docs faster, please let me know. <laughs> you can also kind of grep through the pages too. If you're on uh, Linux, that can be useful sometimes, but the, the search is pretty good. All righty, so again, we uh, uh, enabled our Python tooltips. There's also these developer extras that'll give you a little bit more power too. You can enable those uh, when the time comes. Um, but let's go ahead and keep moving on uh, and start using our internal editor here. Uh, oops. All right, so again, you know, doing these little examples one line at a time in the console is great, great way to play around with, but eventually we wanna write some more meaningful script here uh, and actually show what a series of commands uh, can do and then of course maybe give those to some users so that they can uh, recreate those commands as well. So I'm just gonna use again the internal editor here. It works well enough. I'll paste a little bit of code and we'll, we'll talk about it here. But again, use whatever tools you're productive in, VS Code, Vim, and so on. Um, and you can set it up such that if you're making changes in VS Code, those changes are reloaded in the text editor. Um, that's also uh, available. Um, now, another little tip here as well is to launch Blender from the terminal. Uh, this might depend, or the instructions may differ depending on if you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, but that'll give us some helpful error messages here. Now let's see, here's my terminal here where I launch things. I don't have anything printing out quite yet, uh, but that's just another useful uh, thing or, or you can capture the actual output from the terminal. Again, maybe something for our power users. Alrighty, so that's a little bit of an intro uh, getting us uh, set up here, but let's actually solve the bounding box problem with our Python scripting. So again, gathering some tools from the Python API here. So let's just think about this a little bit for how to create a bounding box uh, programmatically. So again, this is what I showed you as far as the goal uh, that we were gonna try to achieve here, uh, but let's see what we can explore here in our uh, API. So, and again, I showed you that there's a little cheat code. So if you're just trying to, in a sense, uh, complete this, you could just use the, you know, show the bounding box in the viewport for the actual object. And again, that might give you a hint of, maybe that's good enough for your particular solution. But for us, I wanna actually create the geometry so that I can see it, maybe I can use it in a physics simulation or some, you know, place where that might be useful. Um, so let's actually implement that as part of the geometry. So, you know, a little quick question here, and I'll give everybody, you know, a few moments to think about it here, but if you had to compute the bounding box, what's your strategy? What do you think you need to do here? Um, let me give everyone 10 or 20 seconds to think about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Okay, so, so the comment was, uh, take the, I could take the width and the height and maybe divide those. All right, I've got the dimensions in Blender, right? Um, so I actually already know some of this information. Yeah, so that, that could be one solution, right? I could take the dimensions and do something interesting with it to surround this object, right? What, what else were folks thinking about? And there... 
Yeah, so the comment was, just read the array of vertices, everything's got a position, and then just kind of figure out the min and the max. Okay, another solution. Uh, that's gonna happen to be the one. Now, did you see my slides? <laughs> Maybe you did. Uh, but that could be another you know, exact solution. Anybody come up with anything else? Yeah, there could be a couple uh, different solutions for this, but let's go ahead and walk forward with that one. You know, and I, and I think you know, um, Blender does give us accurate information, so we might want to just take the bounds as suggested here. I'm going to show you the vertices because it shows you how to dig into some of the geometry, which I think is interesting here. Um, but let's go ahead and iterate through all the vertices, right? And then we'll get the x, y, and z values and figure out what the min and the max are. Okay, and that's gonna create our bounds for our box. How wide of a box do we need, how high, uh, and how uh, deep the box needs to be for the depth value. Um, and as was suggested um, you know, towards the front here, we do have a dot bound box. Again, it's, it's built into Blender. So oftentimes you'll find you have some of these solutions built in. Just depends how you wanna solve your problem. Do you need the raw uh, vertices or not? I'm gonna say that I need them for this uh, particular talk here. Um, and you can see in the bottom right, if you're curious, how to just get the dot bound box. Uh, and again, these are things that I just learned by trying to recreate or solve a problem that's already implemented in Blender. So again, if you're just thinking about ideas of things to polish up on your scripting, you can uh, you know, take a solved problem and, and try to solve it. Uh, another small caveat here is that we're gonna make this an axis aligned bounding box, meaning that when I rotate uh, the actual mesh, the bounding box will stay in rotation with the box, okay? Alrighty, so um, in order to approach this problem again, here were the important modules that I mentioned. Uh, the Blender Python module, which is sort of going to be the default, you know, always import this module for most of your scripts uh, if you're working with some of the geometry and so on. Uh, but there's these other ones that are of also interest that I snuck in here. BPY.context, so I used that earlier for getting the active object. And that's telling me whatever area that I'm actively in, whether it's a viewport or maybe part of the interface, um, tell me something about the context there and give me some information, okay? Uh, then I've got BPY data, and that stores the uh, whatever information about the object that you're working with. So in the case of a mesh, that could be, again, the vertices, edges, and faces, which we're gonna care about uh, for us uh, today. Uh, and then finally, there's uh, bpy.ops, which are functions that are invoked by the interface uh, generally. Uh, so some sort of operation that we're performing. Uh, let's focus on these two for now. These are gonna be useful for selecting an object that we're interested in and then computing the, the bounding box. Okay, so let's start looking at a bounding box implementation here. And again, first and foremost, the first thing that I need to do is be able to figure out what object I'm interested in. Now again, depending on your script, you could iterate through all objects. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the uh, current object here, okay? Uh, so again, just to show that, I'll show it in the Python console, then we'll move to a script here. Uh, my object, object. That's it, whatever object's uh, selected here, okay? And then you can, uh, oops, type it out here my object, and we can see we have the cube, which matches, if I scroll down here a little bit, in our scene collection, the cube. Okay, so it makes sense. Alrighty, so we've got an object, but how do we actually get the data from that object, meaning the vertices, the edges, and the faces? Well, I'll give you uh, some hints here. And again, how I'm figuring these things out, usually I'm still going to Google if I don't know and saying, how do I get the geometry? <laughs> so I can kind of point you in the right direction. Or you can type out my object, dot, and then hit tab and you'll get a list of, well, what's available? Another way to explore. And then I put that in the documentation. So again, that's again, just thinking about how to learn this stuff. Um, so what I'm getting here is the data, and sometimes you'll hear this referred to as a, a data block, right? Some internal data uh, inside of Blender. Uh, again, vertices, edges, and polygons. So some collection, or maybe it's a list of something or some other data structure, okay? Uh, so that's the idea here. Uh, now let's go ahead and um, start putting part of this script together and looking at the code here. I'm gonna grab it here. So this is the GitHub repository. Again, you can find this, it's already uh, publicly available uh, if you'd like, but I wanna talk about some of the code as it's here so we can see it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to text. Let's create a new file here. 
just gonna dump it in and then we'll talk about the parts uh, of interest here. All righty, uh, so if I scroll over here, um, again, I'm setting up our script so that we're importing modules of interest, maybe timing how long this actual script takes, selecting the active object, and then I wanna start grabbing some of the data here, like the vertices, okay? Uh, and then we're just gonna follow along our bounding box algorithm, which means, well, storing all of our X, Y, and Z values, and then figuring out what is the max and the min of those dimensions here. Okay, so let me scroll us down here. And here we've got uh, that uh, process. So I'm gonna look through for whatever my active object is, all the uh, vertices. Okay, that's this uh, correlating here. And again, just a uh, regular loop in Python. Okay, and then I'm gonna append the uh, v.co, co being the coordinates for x, y, and z, three coordinates, uh, to our arrays here, okay? And then you can, you know, use whatever sort of optimization you want here. You could do this all in one loop here, uh, but I'm just gonna use the min and max values for our x and our y uh, and z arrays, uh, or excuse me, lists here uh, in uh, Python, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I am doing one other funky thing here, which is just to show you um, something, a little bit of a teaser here, uh, to just grab the selected vertices, because maybe I just want that bounding box to be like the character's head or something, you know, some sort of interesting attribute here. So I'm gonna play around with that and show you uh, later uh, how that works. Um, and again, just this idea that when you start playing around with your code, uh, you get some uh, new ideas here. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump here. So again, reviewing what we've done, the important parts here. Again, from our uh, currently selected object, basically build out this array of X, Y, and Z values, and then select the minimum and the maximum. So with this, we've got our dimensions of our actual bounding box here. All right, so I've got the sort of dimensions. So I know the width, height, and the depth of what this bounding box is supposed to be, but how do I create it? So again, this is something that you can think about. You've got a few different options. Uh, immediately, if you're coming from a graphics programming background, um, maybe you're thinking about, okay, I have a mesh that I need to create. So that means I have the indices of some vertices and I need to link them together and figure out the edges and the faces. Uh, and again, that's a valid approach that you could go with. Uh, but again, we're in Blender. It's a little bit of a playground here. So we're gonna be creative. We can think creatively uh, in this tool suite. And I'm gonna actually go with another second approach such that I don't have to worry so much about the connectivity of these vertices, right? That vertex one is you know, linked with three and that makes an edge. And I'm gonna make sure that they're triangles, perhaps if they have to be triangulated, maybe not. Again, depends on um, what you're doing. But again, that's usually what I'm thinking with my graphics hat on. But with my Blender uh, scripting hat on, I'm just gonna say, well, there's already a way to make a cube. That's a box, so why don't we use that in Blender? And we already learned how to grab some operation that occurred. So again, you know, the idea here is if I'm in Blender, I'm gonna go ahead and just add some object here, a mesh, a cube is exactly what I need for my bounding box, and I've got it here, okay? And I can go ahead and look down in my history uh, down in this uh, corner over my shoulder here and figure out what the operation is to make a mesh. Simple enough here. All right, so that's what we're gonna use. Again, uh, you know, we could consider it a little bit of a, I call them cheat codes, but I just call it thinking creatively, right? We're just supposed to play around here. You know, previously I was working on a project where I had to get a shot from 45 separate degrees of angle, one after the other. And I could either rotate one camera and have to worry about repositioning it, you know, 45 degrees, or I could just create 45 <laughs> cameras separated by one degree. Again, the choice is yours, whatever you think is simple and easy to maintain. It's, it's a creative thing programming is. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and just show you in the script here, if I scroll down here. And again, I'm giving myself a little bit of a cheat sheet here as you're learning things, right? Printing off what the bounds are. And we can verify these, right, by clicking on the object and seeing the dimensions. We can compute that. But here is uh, creating our uh, cube here, okay? So there we are. And I'm just creating this temporary cube. I'm gonna make it the 
uh, current active object, and then I'm going to grab the data, which is this next section that I want to talk about here. Now, I've got a cube, I've got its data, but again, we want to think just a little bit about how this data is stored here. So in Blender, we have something called the B mesh. That's one of the internal uh, data structures for representing meshes. And that's probably what's going to be most uh, relevant for us for creating some object. So again, uh, when I looked at the type of our object earlier, we've got the uh, dot mesh type here, okay, for the B mesh. Alrighty, so now that I've got all of my uh, cube and the uh, and it's my active object, I want to be able to grab the data, the vertices, the edges, and the faces. Again, a bunch of ways that you can approach this problem here. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is essentially flatten the data, meaning that I have all of my vertices. I want to write those out as x, y, and z as a tuple here. Okay, So that's what I'm doing in this next block of code. And then I sort of want to do the same thing for my edges. But my edges are just going to come in as a pair, again, uh, a line segment or an edge is two vertices. So again, I'm going to grab those. And for my faces, well, I don't necessarily know how many, um, I should, I suppose, have three vertices at least <laughs> marking the, the face here. But it is a polygon. It could be uh, n-sided. But I also need to iterate throughout that. So that's why I've got this sort of this iteration here. And this is kind of a fun thing to figure out here. How do I iterate through each of these data structures? Um, but uh, that's the idea here. So let me show you in the code. Again, here it is. So our purpose here is just to sort of flatten out our data and get our data into lists here. Uh, and I'm going to show you why that's important later on, because I'm going to be creating a, a Blender mesh that needs a list of vertices, a list of edges, and a, a list of polygons or faces uh, provided to it. Alrighty, so now it's time to uh, also build out uh, our bounding box, meaning, well, I've got the vertices, edges, and the faces of my cube, but I need to make sure that I adjust those vertices to our dimensions, the width, the height, and the depth of the box here. So effectively, what I'm going to do is, again, capture from my cube, again, the temporary vertices, and assign them to, well, basically all the corners of a box here. And you might notice a little pattern here <laughs> if you look through this, but I'm just manually assigning all eight uh, of the vertices to some combination of minimum and maximum values for our x, y, and z. Okay, That's like a truth table uh, where I've got min, 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 max, 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 min, min, max, max, etc. <laughs> I'm sort of repeating uh, down here, but uh, all the combinations here. All right, and now it's time uh, that you've been waiting for is we're actually going to build this thing. It looks like we've got our vertices uh, adjusted. They've been moved uh, to the locations we need. We've got the connectivity information for our edges and our faces to build the actual cube. And now it's time to add the mesh uh, to our scene. So again, I'll go ahead and just show you uh, in the code here in Blender. Let's make sure we can see all of it. Uh, this is the part that I'm going to be focusing on. And I want to create some new object here that's going to be added to our uh, scene's collection of objects. I'm going to prefix it with bounding underscore. Again, choose whatever convention you like, but we need some sort of unique name. And then I'm going to create the new mesh here. So again, uh, I'm going to create a, a new mesh. Now, creating the new mesh um, is important because that's going to sort of update Blender's database of these objects exist. Okay, um, so, so that's what I'm effectively doing, creating this new object. And then what I'm going to do here is populate this mesh from whatever the Python data is, with my uh, vertices from my bounding box and the typical edges and the faces that make up a cube, okay? That I copied over from some cube that already existed, okay? Uh, and again, how you create that is sort of up to you. I like the Blender one. It was easy to work with. That's a quad-based uh, quad uh, mesh, uh, which probably makes sense here. And then finally, uh, I need to do one or two other steps here. So for my bounding object here, I need to... Uh, now create uh, this object here uh, with the name and the associated mesh here. And then finally, uh, this step here at line 111 is going to add to my collection. So let's just see what's going on here. Collection over here in my current scene by default and link it in here. Okay, so that way we should see under whatever our object is the bounding box. And then finally, just, you know, little tiny touch here is to again, use what we learned from our viewport. So 
again, if I scroll down here in object and scroll over the Python tooltip for our bounds, uh, I'm just going to make it a wireframe uh, view by default. OK, so let's see how much uh, this works here. And let's give ourselves a more interesting object. Cube's not a great one to uh, test on. <laughs> so I put in monkey here. And then I can um, alt P is going to be my shortcut on uh, Linux here for generating the bounding box. And we get something like this here. OK, so pretty neat here. Uh, let's rotate it around. There it is. And we can kind of visually verify it here. Or you could, again, verify it against the bounds of the object. Uh, but I do see that it is added here um, <clears throat> under my uh, object here. OK, so a few more steps here, and then we'll be almost complete. Uh, and this is the final step here, um, which is to parent our object uh, for our bounding box under some other mesh. Now, the advantage of this here is if I go back to my code here, show you in the script exactly what this is happening down here, then that means if I transform uh, Suzanne, of course, in the hierarchy, the uh, bounding box moves with it. Okay, And you can think about how you might want to otherwise handle this. You could update it with the uh, rotation or um, scale under the location here. <clears throat> but you probably want to just uh, have it um, set as a parent. So as you update your scene, it updates with it. Again, just thinking creatively about how to approach uh, this problem here. OK, and the rest of this script does a little bit of cleanup to remove the temporary cube and so on. OK, so you know that's our result here, which is uh, quite nice. I think it's taught us how to kind of walk through uh, this process, or maybe just kind of think about uh, how to create things. Um, but we're not quite done yet, because we want to make this a little bit more useful, meaning you know, asking somebody to just paste in a blob of code and execute it with Alt-P or whatever you know, shortcut you have. Um, you know, we can make things a little bit more user friendly. So I'll give you sort of the, the intro here to turn this uh, script into what's an add-on. So again, an add-on being something that you can uh, install from the community or uh, an official uh, Blender uh, add-on. So what we're going to need here for our code is to uh, kind of prep our script here, give it a unique identifier so that we know what this uh, command is here. So we've got this dictionary here called bl uh, underscore info. Again, these things are just by convention, uh, where you need a name and sort of a category for the object and sort of a, a blender version uh, minimum, I suppose, here. And then register and unregister, which are functions that will execute uh, once you add this add-on or remove it for unregister. OK, so that's going to be the first uh, step here. Um, and I'll, I'll show you an example and give you the, the code here in a moment. But again, we want to make our command usable. And this is where you can, when you register your command, you can maybe add it to the user interface. I believe there was a talk on uh, the previous session which talked a little bit more about adding things to the UI. Uh, this particular code, again, from the API docs, is going to add it to our uh, command menu. So we can just hit F3, type the command, and execute it. Okay? Uh, but that'll do the trick for us. Uh, which is the, the last uh, step here. It is to prepare the execute function, which for me means basically taking our code, wrapping it in a class here, object compute bounding box, give it some name. Uh, it's going to inherit it some type of operator, right? It's some ops or operation that when I press a key, I can interact with uh, and have this take place here. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, prepare this. Uh, again, I've got another snippet for you for the add-on, which you can dig through. Um, and as a good exercise, you can you know, think about how you might abstract some things. But let's go ahead and uh, pop this in here. Let's delete this object and start from over. Add our mesh back. And I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and run it, and then we'll do a quick uh, code review here. So Alt-P, uh, what happened? Well, I had something selected, nothing yet. Still need to select my mesh. I can hit F3. And let's type out object, uh, compute, bounding box, blender con <laughs> for the command here. Uh, and you can see the help tips and so on that pop up here. Uh, if I click on that, same result here. OK, so now you've got something functioning that uh, works as an add-on. The next step for you might be to think, how useful is this? Put it in a user interface, maybe toggle some parameters and so on. Um, for how you'd like that bounding box to behave. Okay, so brief code review. Here was that dictionary that we needed here. 
Uh, and this is the first thing that comes uh, in the file, so important. I've had tips here to put a uh, space between the start, again, just something to keep in mind. Uh, and then again, for this class here, it's some operation that we want to take place. Again, a little bit of metadata that we need. And then I've basically just put everything inside of this execute function and indented it over. I'll leave it up to you if you want to abstract or clean up. And then our register and unregister uh, functions here. Okay, and this is basically following the template from the uh, API documentation. Okay, so we've got things working here. That's exciting. Um, and then so, you know, getting us to, to wrapping things up here. Um, you know, we took an introductory look through the Python API. I hope it was enjoyable or maybe you learned something here. And just try to go through and do a non-trivial or interesting problem that made us touch different parts of the Python API so that we could get started with geometry here. Now, there's a couple different, you know, homework features that you could sort of take on here that might be interesting for you to think about. Like, what if I need to recompute the bounding box because the geometry has changed? Well, we can implement some sort of handler to maybe recompute that bounding box, delete the old one, right? And that's something interesting to think about. Maybe we want different operations like bounding spheres or actual convex holes of different quality. And of course, with the code, we could abstract this. I bet, you know, 50 folks saw how to unzip or zip or do a little list comprehension that gets rid of 10 lines of code, right? Great exercise to take this code and just clean it up, right? And make sure that you understand though what's going step by step. And we probably want a little bit of resiliency um, in this script here. Could be a little bit brittle. Like for instance, if I'm running this without selecting an object, haven't done it on accident yet, but right, it's not gonna execute or do the proper thing. So some try or accept blocks may be appropriate, again, to build up our script uh, and make it a little bit more interesting. Um, other things of use, right, learning about Git or version control. Some of you might be uh, using Perforce or some other tool to manage your assets. That's also great. Anything that can handle text-based files, right, as we're building these scripts up, they get longer and longer and you don't want to lose them. Uh, and you want to be able to refactor. Um, and then there's more best practices as far as uh, Blender goes here. So feel free to check those out. Um, and the last thing I'll show here uh, just because I alluded to it, just to make things a little bit more interesting, or if you said, yeah, that was too trivial, I want to try something uh, more fun, is to think about, you know, how would you set this up? So if I had some object here, and I'm going to hit one for vertices, and I select, I don't know, a chunk of it here, uh, and I've got to go back into edit mode because my script's a little bit brittle, <laughs> um, and then um, actually uh, recompute this uh, bounding box again. Uh, and then you can see, well, it only computed the bounding box. Let's see, did it work properly? Whew. Yeah, just for the uh, vertices that were highlighted. So that could be, again, kind of interesting, right? If you got characters with um, you know, their head, torso, shoulders, et cetera, uh, and maybe being able to pick just one point and form clusters. So again, simple problem, but how could you build on it and think a little bit creatively? Um, so with that said, you know, there's other random useful ideas here about time that I mentioned. Um, and this is just how to implement a handler, just a little script here. Uh, in fact, it's small enough. Let's, again, uh, let's just do a quick copy and paste because we've got two minutes and probably time for a question. <laughs> I'm just going to pop this in here. Uh, Alt-P to execute it. And then uh, what changed here? Well, that's the, the question here. Let's open up our terminal. And oh, I've got to add a cube to my scene, actually, here. Let's see. Add a cube, and then every time I move my cube, it should be printing cube changed. Okay, that's the idea with that little handler if you want to play around with it. If I move the monkey, and we've got to make this a little bit smaller here just to demonstrate it. So grab the monkey, G, move it around. Oops, nothing updating on the terminal. As I do stuff to the monkey, as I move the cube around, you'll see, you know, cube changed. So again, you can think about different handlers that execute on things selectively. But again, just little ideas to play around with uh, and have fun. Uh, so with that said, uh, you know, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for your time. Hopefully you learned something or some exercises you could try out. <laughs>